Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be doing a little bit more experimentation with chalk pastels and this time we're going to be doing a portrait. Okay, so as my model today I've got the lovely Michaela Coyle. Um, I'm really keen on the work that she's been doing on TV and I think she's got a magnificent face. Now, um, the video is going to be very very short so I'm not very likely to get a resemblance, but it doesn't really matter, yeah? But I just want to show you how to do it using a, a photo reference. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, oh, I've lost that, is establish um, a general shape of her face. And I'm not gonna be really committing to anything. I'm literally just doing a little bit of an oval shape. Yeah, very, very faint. I'm gonna mark the hairline and I'm gonna mark where her hair is. So from the hairline, I'm now going to divide this space into one, two and three equal spaces. And then I'm going to do a faint line for the neck. Yeah. So on my top line, I've got the top of the ears. This is general. Um, rules for proportions. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the eyebrows over here. So I'm doing the drawing in charcoal because um, I have a smaller point to draw with than what I do with the uh, pastels, yeah? So that's my only reason. And now I'm literally looking at shapes of the features and just doing a very, very rough um, representation of the features, yeah? So I've got the eyebrows there and the nose. Those ones are at the top of that one and at the bottom of that one. And bang in the middle of here, I've got the lips. I'm going to get started with the line that divides the lips. And then I'm going to do the lips themselves. So I'm basically, I just want like a rough drawing that I can work with, but I can alter it as I go along. So see here now I can see better where the line for the her chin is, and I can also get a better idea it's got amazing cheekbones of things. So now from here I can go on to do the eyes. I just love her face. I think she's got such an expressive face. Um, so when choosing a model, you can always do a self-portrait as well as choosing someone whose face you like. Yeah, so I'm basically going to leave this as such for now. I'm going to get rid of my guidelines. Yeah, and I more or less got a little bit of it. Yeah, so let me get that eye in there. And let's get a little bit of her hairstyle. Okay, so from here what I'm going to do is locate the lighter colors and <clears throat> I'm going to be using blue and white for the highlights. So I'm just going to go in all the areas where there's highlights and I'm looking at the shapes that those tones have, yeah? So it's literally looking at the shapes, drawing the contour and then filling it in with a color that you're allocating for light. Okay. 
okay so then I'm gonna fill them in quickly and I'm going to move on to some light mates I'm still working on light tones and I am surrounding them the light areas and just still observing very much of what's going on where and when I'm looking at the face I'm trying not to think it's a person I'm literally just looking at shapes and I'm starting from the light colors um, onwards So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move on to a darker color. And at the moment I'm using the side technique. And that means using the material on its side. I'm not dealing with any details so always when you're living with de detail you leave it right until the end and now I'm gonna start moving on to a darker tone I'm just breaking up my, my material and I'm going to start very much drawing the contour of the shape of the dark and then filling it in So as you can tell at the beginning it's not making sense whatsoever. And that's okay. And it's better if you try really hard for it not to make sense and just to be describing shapes. Because if not you're going to start getting drawn to detail and if you get drawn to detail too early <clears throat> you're kind of setting yourself up for failure. I always forget the ears, so yeah, I try to get the ears. <laughs> okay, so I'm also going to put a little bit of dark in here. And then I'm going to go on in the neck. Okay, so that's pretty much my starting point. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use a feathering technique to start blending in my darks and my mids. So I'm just doing short little strokes to start to blend in things and incorporate them. I'm going to use different techniques so that you can get a good combination of different techniques onto the one drawing. I'm gonna start filling in some gaps. I'm also going to introduce, if I have, is that a nice little gray? Yes, it is. So I'm gonna, there's a lot of areas of kind of like grayness as well. 
and when you're using a natural color and everything is kind of really bright it's really good to have some very very neutral kind of grayish tones to give the eye a little bit of a break so that it doesn't all become terribly overwhelming to look at so this in some ways is serving me as a light but it's also going to serve me as a bit of a respite to the eye yeah so this is what i've got so far so i'm going to proceed to start putting in some whites reflections of light and then I'm going to use a lighter one to blend in to act as a blender by using it gently on the side and it's gonna blend the different colors yeah for a more smooth kind of approach so I want a combination of techniques for some bits are smooth, some bits are a bit rough, and not everything is exactly the same. Notice how I'm not dealing with the eyes, I am not dealing with the lips just yet. Yeah? So thinking about color theory, um, I'm just bringing in some like turquoise, which bounces off really, really well of rich browns and ochre kind of tones. And I think it's a really good complement color as well when you're doing um, black skin tones. So see, it's very slowly starting to come together. The important thing is to not have any um, kind of, not, not really like um, have any expectations of what you're doing. If you lower your expectations and just really enjoy the process and the moment you start thinking, oh, I really want to make something good, or I want to make her look good, especially when you're making some somebody who's really beautiful or perhaps someone who you're emotionally attached to, it becomes quite difficult to observe them in, in a realistic way because we have this kind of um, idea of, how they're ideal to us. So it's important to, I think when you learn to do portraits, pick somebody who's not really, you haven't got an emotional attachment to. And if it's someone beautiful, perhaps not the specific ideals of beauty that they are so constraining. So I'm introducing some blacks. Oops, I've lost her again. Come on, Michaela. There we go. I'm introducing some blacks, but I don't want to be too heavy on using black because it's an unnatural color. Just using a little bit of a bright color to make some corrections and get a little bit of gesture and expression yeah so I'm gonna proceed with the whites of the eyes before I do anything else so I want to get my light colors in first I'm 
before I get the dark ones. So I'm also going to be doing that light in the eye up there, that other little highlight there. So before I'm doing anything else, I'm putting in those ones here. Cool. So now I'm gonna get the little side of it to try and get some outlines. And there's a very big reflection on the eye, so I'm gonna leave some space for that. I'm not I'm trying not to be too descriptive with the black in the in the eyes and not be not put all the information in because it's good as well when you're doing something that is quite gestural for the eye of the viewer to make up what's missing yeah so now I'm gonna look for a funky color to do the reflection in her eye and I'm gonna do pink because I've done quite a lot of um quite a lot of blue already and I'm going to stick perhaps just a tiny touch of some funky green color. And following that, I'm gonna make some lighter browns into the black to give it a little bit of depth. Yeah. And I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of pink as well in the whites of her eyes. Again, for depth. Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit of an outline for the fold of her Yeah. And here I'm going to get a little bit of a blending stick. And with a blending stick, I can fade that away a little bit and also get a little bit more definition. So these ones are really, really handy when you're doing detail in pastels. And it's quite difficult to do the detail with the pastel itself. So you can just Extend your line. Oh, I messed it up there. Okay. Again, mix up with some feathering and um, we need a bit more of the grace as well. Oh, that light, that's what I was missing. Sorry, my hands are so dirty by now. So here I'm gonna get that really nice highlight in the nose. And I'm just looking at it and I've got a bit of a problem in there. I think I've got too many colors, so I'm just gonna dial that down a little bit. So as you can see, it's very much a trial and error process of trying what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. So from here I'm going to move on to the hair. <clears throat> I 
and I'm gonna keep some texture here to kind of describe the qualities of afro hair that is very textured And I'm also going to go with a lighter brown, try and lighten up a little bit my blacks. And I'm going to reinforce some of my darks. I'm bringing a little bit of contrast. Bring a bit of definition to the ears. Okay, and now I'm gonna have a quick look and see where am I going right and where am I going wrong. on a little bit of detail and I think what I'm missing is that I need a bit more darkness around here So this is just finishing touches. So at the end I kind of like tend to go over my highlights and also tend to go over my darks. <clears throat> because throughout the blending process you kind of those are the ones that you um lose the most. Yeah, a little bit of variation on mark making. And I'm using this kind of mark making, but you might be choosing to do a, a very different one. It's just to have a kind of complement of different forms of marks. Again with my beautiful turquoise and I think complements so well and just go over my highlights so this is a nice idea of how to use a natural color to do highlights instead of always using white As you can see, this is why we put the light in first. It's very difficult to incorporate a, a light color <coughs> onto your darks. 
don't forget what I'm doing here. Even if it's very dark hair, there's still light and there's still mid-tones and otherwise your hair will become super flat. So it's really important that you get that done. Okay, I'm starting to feel happier with this. I think it's nearly done. I'm just going to bring a bit more definition with the whites in the eyes. Oh, I can just tell now where I've gone wrong. So this here, it's down a bit, bit more. Yeah, I got the shape of the eye a little bit wrong. But hey. And I'm gonna bring a bit of white in here as well. Okay, and now I'm going to just continue with finishing touches. We're nearly done, guys. Okay, and I'm just going to complement it by putting a bit of fuchsia in the background. So as you can tell, <coughs> it's become very dirty. So putting a little bit of a color around it can help things out at the end. See, that's, hold on, I'm just going to move all of that stuff in there. <laughs> And I'm gonna leave it as that. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on making faces with chalk pastels. And it's a goodbye with very dirty hands for me. And I hope you give this a go from home. And yeah, see you very soon. Take care.